My name is Nayana Suvarna, and I'm a senior computer engineering student at the University of Pittsburgh. This summer, I worked on exploring collision checking methods for multi-agent pathfinding. Multi-agent pathfinding, or MAPF for short, aims to compute collision-free paths for multiple agents between their respective start and goal positions. This summer, I worked on exploring collision checking methods for MAPF problems where agents can be represented as convex polygons. Let's consider an automated construction environment where agents are expected to transport large parts from one location to another. This may include objects such as poles, beams, or doors. In these situations, the shape and orientation of these agents are important to ensure collision-free paths. Traditional approaches simplify the shape of these agents as circles or points. This is because exact methods for collision checking may slow down planning. Nevertheless, these naive methods may cause valid paths to be rejected. You can see this in the figure on the right. In this figure, an agent is traveling through a hallway carrying a beam. With the traditional approach of a bounding circle, the planner would fail to find a solution through the hallway, even though one exists. Some of the challenges associated with convex polygon-shaped agents are that we have to consider the additional space occupied by agents. This additional space increases the likelihood of collisions and consequently increases planning time. Additionally, we have to consider the space occupied by an agent during movement. In the figure below, you can see that in between the actions of the agents rotating from facing north-south to facing east-west, the agent occupies the upper right and lower left corner cells. So we have to consider this additional information while planning to ensure collision-free paths. A lot of work has been done in the game design community to develop efficient approaches for detecting overlap between shapes. One such method is a separating axis theorem. The separating axis theorem states that if you can find an axis that separates the projection of two convex shapes, then an overlap does not exist between the two shapes. This approach generalizes to our problem because it can check for overlap between convex polygons that are arbitrarily oriented. For our approach, we plan on a grid that's embedded in SE2. Our graph representation consists of a set of vertices and edges, where edges serve as connections between vertices. For our approach, we represent our agents using x, y, theta. This reference point is used to determine the shape of an agent. For this work, we consider agents that occupy multiple adjacent cells. The actions available to agents are translating forward and backward, rotating clockwise and counterclockwise, or waiting in place. We assume that the agent has four possible orientations in cardinal directions. For collision checking, we interpolate the position of agents between actions to determine the space occupied during movement. With our approach, we check for edge collisions or overlaps between the shapes of agents before, during, and after movement. To test our approach, we compare it to the baseline approach of cell collision detection. This method checks for collisions by approximating the cells occupied by the shape of an agent. For this approach, a collision is defined as when two agents occupy the same cell at a given time. As a result, our approach and the cell-based approach detect collisions differently. With the cell-based approach on the left, these agents are said to be colliding because they both occupy the bolded cell. But we can see from our approach on the right that these two agents are not in fact colliding. We tested these methods in a 16 by 16 empty grid world and a 64 by 64 grid world with 10% obstacle density. We placed a 120 second time limit for planning and tested with sets of two, three, five, and seven agents with 50 tests per set of agents. For each approach, we tested with agents of length three and five. From the results, we see that the time taken for collision checking with the cell-based approach was longer than our method. This is probably due to how, as we consider larger agents, a larger number of cells need to be considered for the collision checking with the cell-based approach. This in turn increases the runtime for planning. For SIT-based approach, we check the same number of edges for collision checking, regardless of agent size. So these results suggest that our approach may scale well to larger agents. Our future work will involve testing our approach for heterogeneous shaped agents, as well as testing it in more grid environments. I would like to thank my sponsors for supporting my work this summer. I'd also like to thank my lab members, Dr. Howie Chosen and Richard Wren, for their support and guidance through the summer. I'd just like to thank Rachel Burston and John, Dr. John Dolan for their support and all their hard work in making this possible.